Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achind. Sunday night, talking about Taiwan. Chinese keep talking about the factor that we want to take Taiwan. And if it's a fruit, they can pluck from the tree. But anyways, let's see whether the Chinese have the capability of taking up the challenge of Taiwan. Taiwan is not a small little island that we're talking about. It's a big place. Looking at the slow grinding assault that the Russians have had to do in Ukraine, one, you can also understand what kind of lessons that the Chinese have also learned. To discuss this, I have with me Left Commander Sudhir Kandari. Sir, good evening and welcome to the show. Hi, good evening, Adi, and good evening to all your viewers. Now, uh, China is our one uh, entity, I would say. They don't have any much of capability, like, uh, but they want to project it big. Now, you, you want to uh, uh, take a lead, uh, we will go ahead or shall I? Uh, propaganda, sir, propaganda. It's all, all about propaganda, propaganda. Nothing else. <laughs> That's that's the whole game. Uh, that's the whole guys, game. Uh, as 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 always, sir has uh, made a presentation, so I'll just switch that on, and then we'll discuss this subject. Adi, they are living in a fool's paradise. If you really ask me, <laughs> you know something. You know we. During daytime, we're talking about this radicalization. Uh, radicalization and doctor indoctrination is not jihadism; it's communism also, where the entire top military leadership is so deeply radicalized and indoctrinated for communism that they only serve the party; they don't think about the country, and that's going to be a problem for them. The biggest factor in China, Taiwan, the Taiwan Strait is weather. Can you have slide number one, please? Much mystery continues to surround the Taiwan Strait currents and less rational explanations are sometimes given for the sea currents strange and erratic behavior. According to local legend, legend the strait is black ditch haunted by the multitudes who have drowned over the centuries trying to sail to Taiwan from China. Superstitious believers claim that local currents are not currents at all, but rather the hands of sea demons who malevolently, voluntarily drag their victims down into the afterlife. Is this the fate that awaits China? <laughs> uh, I'll put it this way. South China Sea is a death trap for US and Taiwan is a death trap for and Taiwan is a death trap for China. USA will not come inside the uh, Taiwan Strait to fight China. And China to fight USA they have to come other side of the Pacific on the uh, other side of Taiwan into the Pacific to fight them. Which they are doing slowly. Solomon's, Solomon's and Micronesia and all that. That's right. But, you know, talking about their capability and uh, uh, the military base, mm. yeah, I'll give you a normal example. Pakistan has bought a couple of frigates from China. They only had to pass through, I won't say through the storm because they never go through the storm. You stay at the outer periphery of the storm and sit one nautical miles away from the eye of the storm, the tropical revolving storm. And for eight months, the ship, those ships could not sail. They were they had to undergo major repairs because water seeped in through all the air vents and air pipes here. That is the quality of the China, what they make. We'll see as we uh, proceed further. Now, the war will not just take up like you know, at the click of two fingers and you say, It's not like this. There will be certain indica indicators well before the actual war starts. And to speak of the Taiwan Strait uh, for the full scale invasion, the 
time window is very narrow. That is only in the month of April for a couple of weeks. Again, I'm saying it will not be. I'm saying they can expect good weather. But when the weather turns bad over there, nobody knows. Although the scientific forecasting methods are available, they have what you call high frequency surface weather radars. And with the past data and the developing data, they can forecast, but Taiwan Strait had never been, because the thing was said heretic behavior, it never been a correct forecast. Unlike North Sea, I'm the, not the North Sea in China, the UK I'm talking about. You can synchronize your watch if they say the weather will go bad at certain time, the weather will go bad at that particular time only. You can actually synchronize your watch. Can we move to the next slide, please? This is Dr. Zai. When she took over, she said that they will not come to any pressure from China. They have their own operational plan named as Guan, which is renewed as and when required. And annually, they actually go through the entire plan and update it. They have simulated the following conditions. Extended blockade. Americans will intervene. Americans may not come for their help. They may arrive too late to make any difference. So they have prepared as of today. Yeah, Taiwan has the most robust air defense system. Extended blockade. If China decides decides to starve them, China will be starving themselves first. Because it then it will open blockade, like you know, the USA will intervene, the entire world will come down. Americans they will intervene. China has that worry. May not come for their help. Taiwan has to fight off the, on their own, for which they are well prepared. They may arrive too late. Or they may not come at all, like, or they make Taiwan to fight, fight like you, Ukraine to the last man. But China is going to suffer very heavy casualties and they will be devastated. Devastated, they will. Now, can you move to the next slide, please? So China's war doctrine, that I picked up from the open source, like, you no, know, obviously I won't have any access to the confidential material. And uh, these are principles of war, you know, how you go about it. Any country would follow that, you know, air, land, sea, space, cyber domains, media outlets. Let's go in the reverse order. Media outlets. You know, uh, during daytime, we were discussing about this, the way Chinese have, in, have infiltrated journalist, journalism, media, your uh, intellect, academia, or to say the think tank policy makers, to the extent they have bribed politicians also, there will be one lobby who will, who will keep repeating that why should we go for Taiwan's help? Like, you no, know, let them <coughs> handle their own business. We shouldn't have a war. We should take care of our own country, employment, economy. Let's have peace talks and all. And China is very good in propaganda. They may try to legitimize their action through these, these very sources to say that what China is doing is right. That's another part of the propaganda. Unrestricted warfare, that's, that's what they talk about. That's unrestricted warfare. And you find the same thing happening in our country too, for that matter. You know, talk to Pakistan, talk to who here? Talk to China. Talk to China which way? Like, no, once... A, Moment, Mr. Z comes down to India and they uh, or our heads up to meet. They start off some badmashi at uh, at the LSE. Cyber domains. The cyber domain, the cyber attacks will start before the actual war starts. That is the attacking the. Uh, Finance ministry, economics, your banking system, financial institution, then your health services, transportation, 
communication you can well imagine the entire government machinery will be in panic at that time if all the things are taken down suddenly space satellites the military commanders would like to know the precise location of taiwan's defenses their deployment and they may launch few more satellites for that matter small satellites which are kept ready they will need the imagery before the war during the war and after the war to assess that whether the target which were to be destroyed accomplished or not and to plan the future course of action land part of it uh, adi i will request uh, my senior general narayan sir and general shankar sir to talk about the land warfare in case chinese troops do land up on taiwan but i can say that not much will be not many will be left to come on the mainland because the sea is going to consume them we'll come to the sea part later on and uh, that's what we're talking about going to talk about the amphibious landing air part there'll be multiple air strikes flurry of missiles flying over hitting various targets now here's the problem for china like the you know in iraq when usa moved in they identified 60 individual targets to be destroyed individual high value targets china has a list of almost 5 to 6 6000 and they narrowed narrow down to if i'm not wrong 600 to 1000 individual targets when they have an inventory of 2000 missiles here. so the air strikes will be there the missiles will be fired at various targets on taiwan and the strikes from the air will continue from the rocket forces and the air force before the actual landing during the landing and even after the forces are moved much in now can we move to the uh, next slide now let's uh, for a moment uh, talk about it why taiwan is so much why china is so much interested in taiwan and they had been saying no it can be the ego problem also that taiwan is part of china for that matter even uh, what's his name yeah chang kai shek used to say what chang kai shek the ma who came in 90s 1992 consensus he said one china but it could never materialize because they said roc is one china and they kept saying prc is one china so one china means what for them that's the problem that is the problem in 90s and now when china says that taiwan is part of integral part of china their interest is not taiwan they have enough of mainland to meet their own requirements and the resources they want to be controlling the entire chain that we had been talking about earlier the island chain and if they reduce if they take over taiwan they are virtually cut off japan japan 15 to 20% by the blockade only they'll reduce their what you call imports 30% their economy activity and war making potential will be destroyed and at 50% limit of consumption would to reduce to 50% they will have to use rationing to limit consumption so japan's what you call national national economy and war making potential to collapse entirely and this blockade can cause shipments to decrease and even create a famine within Jap japanese islands the moment taiwan is gone japan is also gone you can you take it from USA will come it depends at what stage they come but taiwan is not taiwan uh, is not taking but they are prepared in a sense like in case they come fine if they don't, don't don't come we have to defend you know one of the mars what you call uh, uh, aids and made a statement that the more taiwanese learn about china mainland the more this hate them 
So Taiwan, Taiwan is going to def defend themselves more than what Ukrainians are doing. Ukraine is a different story, like, you know, Zelensky's position, whatever it might be, but Taiwan is going to really fight. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah. Or you want to add anything on this particular... Uh, no, uh, this is... On this, yeah, like, about the line dash line and the first chain and second chain of islands. That's that's the whole thing. <laughs> now look at this. China devised an operations plan in 1949 that took into account the following key points. Taiwan's geography. Very, very important part when it comes to actual land fighting over there. Enemy force assessment, strategic direction, guiding principles, overview of troop deployments, maneuvers, communication, logistic, air and chemical defense operations, preparations. And most of it stands true today also. They could not do it that time in Kinmen Islands in 1949 was just smashed. Taiwan was militarily very strong as compared to China till 1969. I will not dwell much into the history where Stalin gave uh, aid to Mao and then Stalin got was quite angry with Mao with his actions. And then 1958, Korean War, Ch Chinese troops were deployed that side, but USA moved in with the 7th Fleet and they placed nuclear warheads, nuclear weapons in southern Taiwan under the custody of USA only, not under the custody of Taiwan, to counter the human waves from China. Which they removed, if I'm not wrong, in 1974. They removed those weapons from there. And uh, after that particular uh, US President uh, Carter's uh, that 1990s, I think, uh, Taiwan stopped getting the aid and the military power started coming down and China grew with aid from Russia. Subsequently, George Bush and Obama, they froze arms supplies to Taiwan quite, for quite some time. So, US had been flip-flopping in their policy, but the TSA Act is very clear and now they are again raised the tempo by, said, by saying that and repeating number of times that will stand by Taiwan in case China comes over. That is only Joe Biden saying it. I mean, the White House goes around and saying, no, 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 we, there's no change in policy. No, that's playing diplomacy again. Huh? Like, yeah. mu se kuch bolo, dusre mu se kuch bol do. They call it strategic ambiguity. So strategic ambiguity. Yeah, yeah that's right. Now, can we move to the next slide? Now, difficulties faced at that time and today are the same. That time they decided leaving the Chinese mainland at high tide and arriving at a time to attack Taiwan's beaches at low tide. Now, here the ambiguity will remain in every military commander's mind whether to actually go in at high tide or to go at, to go in at the time of low tide. High tide will give you advantage of covering a less distance of the land by 400 to 500 meters and which will be very crucial for any frontal attack. Low tide, you have to cover that much of distance more. But the problem with the low tide is that if you go at low tide, sorry, if you go at high tide, there after the, when the water is receding, first wave in has gone, uh, gone in, now the landing crafts have to pull out with the rising tide and bring in more. And you get if cut off for some time. They can't do it. If your first wave is not correct, you'll get cut off. Then, no, I'm saying after the first wave gone in, they have to bring in the second wave also. Uh, and later on marry up the forces. But if you're gone at the high tide, and the tide, tide starts reducing, uh, how this guy, these guys will come back here? How they'll pull out for that matter? Anyway, so... Marrying up the forces after landing up at multiple points, which is not possible. Basically, if you ask me, uh, there are 14 uh, landing zones identified so far, out of which two are color-coded red. Four or five are yellow and rest all are green. Now the color coding is red is for the most probable landing beach. That takes into the account of uh, account of what you call uh, proximity to the nearest airport, the highways, the bridges, and distance to be traversed to Taipei because they have to take over Taipei for that matter first. To have a control over the entire country. If they land somewhere in south, imagine the distance they'll have to cover. Time is the essence there. The more time they spend, the more vertical aid will come from outside. So 
So they wanted a swift operation where, as we spoke about air, land, sea, cyber, media, everything has to be precise, coordinated, no lapses. And Adi, in any military doc, uh, what you call uh, warfare, like do any study, let it be an exercise or actual war, after making the first contact, the plans never go as per the plans here. Mm -hmm. Somewhere it will be accelerating, somewhere it will be, uh, somewhere else it will be, there will be retardation. So one guy moves ahead, other guy hasn't moved up. There will be a hell to pay for other guy who has moved up because the backup hasn't come. Just imagine you have dropped the paratroopers and the landing is not successful. You have dropped the paratroopers behind the enemy lines. And your landing craft, crafts have not been able to land the forces. The Maria plan has gone haywire and those guys will be killed or will be taken as prisoners here. So keeping airport, highways, bridges, buildings, your civilian population, everything has to be taken into account before they plan the beach. The most probable beach is, uh, can we go to the last but one slide? Further down is the second last slide, I think. Uh, one above this. One above this. That is Tao Yuan Beach. So beaches on the south are also good for landing, but the Taipei happens to be too far off here. Some military commanders talk of landing on the south side. Somebody talks on landing on the northern side. Taipei is close to that. There is an international airport. So those are the two red beaches marked on the north side. Here. Now those beaches are well defended. Not that the yellow or green will not be defended. They are equally well defended. It depends on the terrain and the other requirements. How much your defense is required. We can go off the slide now, there's no problem at all. Now, talking about the landing part of it, there has to be a staging area and they will have to, well, I'm coming to the weather part, which is a major enemy for China, not Taiwan, not their defenses, is the weather. A staging area will be somewhere Fujian, from where they'll have to traverse, I would say, they would like to travel the shortest distance across. Your speed is also the essence, time is also the essence. Big problem. Yeah. So 70 to under 50 or nautical miles, depending on from where they are starting. Now here, just give it a deep thought. Before the landing, actual the staging area, the troop starts coming over there, they would have been training somewhere else. They Those troops... They will have to come down to staging area. There will be a whole lot of mass movement. Your number of air squadrons will be moved from point A to point B. Number of ships will be coming at Anchorage and coming alongside inside the harbor. Now, those, these are the strategic indicators when the military commanders will start telling the political leadership in Taiwan. Plus, Japan, Japan and what you call USA is already there to give them satellite pictures that something is happening over there. They are doing in Ukraine also for that matter. Now the troops to be taken across Taiwan will have to be, I would say, in excess of 600,000, 700,000 for that matter. The reason being 1.62,000 uh, uh, is the active service personnel in Taiwan with equal number in reserve forces. Yes. So if you talk of 1 is to 3, it comes to 900,000. But you need 1 is to 5 ratio for this kind of an operation, not 1 is to 3. China has 6 or 8, I think, uh, landing dock ships and they've got some 10 or 12 odd uh, big landing uh, ships. Maximum they can transport is 50 to 60,000 troops in those particular vessels. 
Rest of the troops, commercial vessels, ferries, maybe container vessels. Those vessels will have to be modified. There will be excessive what you call activity in the shipyard. New ship building, modifications going on. And I can tell you this much, I have confidence with my personal experience. Chinese shipbuilding is as good as making a paper boat here. You pay them any amount of money. Like in Japan, you pay the money, you get a good ship. Don't pay the money, you get a paper boat. But China, you do anything, they're good for nothing. I, uh, when I speak to you about that particular uh, two Pakistani frigates, you know, Hmm. Uh, was that during the daytime or in the, this program only I spoke about? No, we were just talking before the show, sir. Yeah, before the show. So, two frigates, or no, sorry, the frigates that Pakistan got from China, they went through the rough weather and for eight months they were laid up for repairs in Pakistan. They couldn't sail because the water had, there's a water ingress through the air vents and the air pipes. And all the what you call the interior of the ship was flooding. Hmm. This is the quality they have. They can have 400 number of ships, but the, I've seen their quality of work uh, in their shipyards. Now, when you make these modifications, see, one has to understand the difference between the mindset of a merchantman and the naval naval person because the jobs are different. Hmm. And the ship hmm. has a different mindset. In a place like China, you have a commissar who's going to decide what a merchant man or what a naval man is going to do. Ship is just like a, uh, we say in our shipping language that ship is like a box, an empty box. You add the weight and remove the weight. Whole lot of equipment has to be placed inside those ships. Loading, unloading sequence, if something goes wrong, the ship will capsize alongside only. Yeah. And if and in China, if commissar says load, load means load. In other countries where you have a democratic setup, if the merchant marine captain says, no, I cannot load this way, loading has to be this way, the naval, the naval team and the merchant navy team will sit together and then decide how to go about it. But there, commissar says load. Now, when you're going to discharge what you call at the uh, landing zone, there has to be a sequence of discharging also. You want the men to go first or the equipment to go first? Yeah. Now you bring, fine, these are the indicators and the difficulties they're going to have. If they're going to have a, a modification where they're going to keep a whole lot of equipment and on the uppermost deck, uh, 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 I don't want to be too technical, but uh, basically I'll just tell you in brief, are the The stability criteria a vessel can sail with minimum metacentric height of 15 centimeters also. Mm. But there are seven conditions to be met. If you don't meet those seven conditions, I'm not going to technical details of what should the uh, it end of the GZ curve and what should the angle of field at what should the angle of immersion of the deck. I'm not going to those details at all. If you're not meeting that carry, uh, criteria, the vessel will capsize maybe alongside. Or moment she comes out of the harbor, she gets the first adverse wave hitting her. And if you are loading too heavy down below, she'll be so stiff. Taiwan weather is so bad, which I'll come to now. She'll be rocking violently. Yeah. I can quote a number of examples when rough seas, vessels, metacentric, what is, uh, uh, metacentric uh, height was too large. Vessel was too stiff. She rolled violently, a stiff rolling. The securing arrangements of the heavy machinery or heavy equipment that you're carrying as a cargo that came loose, that snapped, thing hit the ship side. Water gushed in. There's a big hole in the ship and the ship capsized. That is what I'm talking of when you have somebody to listen to and you say, I can't do it. Here, the commissar is going to tell you what. How to go about it? Because Beijing will tell that guy, do it and he'll have to do it. Yeah. But coming to weather part of it in the in the, uh, in the Taiwan Strait, uh, mostly the
the significant wave height now when i say significant wave height uh, don't go by the dictionary meaning of significant wave height there's a technical thing you know used for that matter that is a uh, earlier it used to be the mean wave the highest or the third wave used to be taken as a significant wave height and nowadays it is four times the standard deviation of the surface elevation elevation for the surface so it's a bit technical i'm going to that 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 is 0 to 5 meters so zero is just a figure but it will never be zero i can assure you that much that's only to talk about that because the standard deviation of it moves from zero to outwards to five side here maximum five limit now coming back to the weather part of it you can expect in layman's language throughout the year barring i said few weeks in april minimum weight high wave high 3 meters there could be more than that winter time we have the weather coming down from up north from the siberia and the monsoon time we have the weather coming up from the south 3 meters wave direction north or south you are transiting across the strait waves are hitting you from the side you are going to bring in artificial docks artificial piers artificial berths for that matter pontoons carrying amphibian tanks when you're going to go in with 600 to 7 700000 troops minimum troops i'm saying think of the military equipment required logistics required food ammunition rations and everything to be stand by on the other side to bring in and to have a stand by plan b for that matter is going to be a major major operation and mother nature is unforgiving there after assuming everything has gone fine taiwan has not fired a single shot they are idiots they will let you cross the uh, taiwan strait peacefully when they have their own uh, cruise missiles they have by the name shuan feng 3 they have they are not going to use it they are not going to fire their artillery they are not going to carry out any air strike because they'll be hiding somewhere let's assume that <coughs> you come to the beach there the beaches are well defended they will have sea mines gone are the days when you were depending on the contact mines or the slag line mines you know uh, those kind of mines or the counter the counting mines uh, nowadays what they have is almost 7000 there was talk of 7000 mines they are influence mines acoustic pressures suction reading mines they are programmable mi mines you can program the mine with signatures of the vessel propeller noise and the machinery vibrations moment the mine reads that it blows up now somebody will say mine clearance will be there are you going to bring all the mine sweepers and expose them to the enemy fire from the taiwan side what you going to bring in first they going to have a uh clam shell traps you know they open at 45 degrees like this and they want to tear apart the sh ship sir they want to have spikes steel uh, what you call uh, spikes which are at the 45 degrees angle fishing nets a um, most primitive thing fishing net once your propeller gets entangled into that you cannot move mm. then you going to have there after uh, container trucks sunk over there you going to have a sunken ship placed over there and in any case if you go off taiwan the area is littered with shipwrecks remember the first slide many of people try to cross it nothing happened there all the wrecks of 49 time when they try to come close in the fishing fishing wooden boats these are talking of the sophisticated way of warfare defending the beach mm. well in the war everything is fair what taiwan is have done they were a network of oil pipelines into the water from the beach which they open and ignite it at the last moment now you'll have fire on the surface they have already stocked up 200 liter drums which they will fill up with gasoline and explosives move to the bottom floating just 3 to 4 feet below the surface mm. 
detonate it and see the uh, fun after that. You know, something in the Navy, we carry out amphibious exercise, hydrographers go, they carry out the survey of the beach gradient to the largest scale possible using the multi beam swath echo sounders or uh, side scan sonars to see the bottom is all clear, weather is calm, everything is good, and then you land. Here you are talking of landing in unknown place because Taiwanese have constructed many number number of what you call uh, breaker walls, fish farms. Each time you construct a thing on the beach, the flow of the water changes and the and the bathymetry, the approaches changes. Mm. The topography has changed. China won't have, they can have satellite imagery. If satellite imagery was that good, you don't need uh, hydrographic surveyors to actually walk on the beach and give you the precise location of the land landing here. You don't have to do the survey then. Do it by satellites only. No? They help to some extent satellites, but the latest feature of the beach, which actually matters for landing, will not be known to Chinese. Now, even the PLA medical doctrine, they are what you call uh, the medical professionals in the PLA, they are saying that our troops, after traveling such a long distance to come to the staging area, thereafter tra traversing what you call uh, 100 to 200 odd nautical miles, depending on which point to which point, subjected to the weather conditions, 95% will be seasick. Because I said elements are from the site and she will keep rolling. And Adi, I'm telling your viewers because the guys in uniform, they know it very well what seasickness means. The guy who's seasick, especially the guy who's not used to going to sea, He would jump into, into the sea and commit suicide. He can't eat food. He can't take a morsel. He can't have a drop of water. He vomits blood. But nothing is left in his body to vomit out there. 95% because you're going to come in with whatever number of vessels I'm talking about. Thousands thousands of vessels you're going to get to transport your troops. They'll be jam-packed in those vessels like sardines. In a canyon, when you don't have a free breathing space, that aggravates the seasickness. One guy falls seasick, he'll throw up, there'll be the rest of the guys throwing up thereafter. Okay. And you have no energy left in you thereafter. No, I'm talking to the guys who are not in uniform, telling you seasickness. If they haven't heard of it, please ask somebody who's, he'll tell you that I'll do anything in my life, but I'll never go to a ship. Same lot you bring and you land them on the beach and expose them to deafening sound of shells falling left, right and center. The medical profession, the PLA army, knowing the capability of their own troops and their training and their mindset, they're saying there will be a situation where they might freeze and they may have a uh, fight or flight syndrome. They may start running back to the uh, landing crafts here. Provided those landing crafts are in one piece because they'll be blown up by the time you land here. Now imagine a merchant vessel which has bought in the troops, a commercial vessel or a ferry for that matter, and you're trans transferring the personnel to the uh, 10 miles offshore at Anchorage. You won't come near for that matter to the shore. 10 miles off, you're landing them in the, uh, putting them, transferring them in, uh, into the landing crafts. Both the vessels moving three meters up, up and down if they are in sync, if they're in sync, uh, if the movement is synchronous, no problem. Both of you go up together, both of you come, come down together. But when nothing is synchronous at sea, both the vessels will have their own motion. Six degrees of motion will be there at Anchorage. And if a couple of guys fall and get crushed in between the two steel hulls, you can imagine the morale of an exhausted man of the medical condition that I told him when before he started from there. What his condition would be? Will be able to fit to fight? Well, Indian troops will fight. I'm telling you, we have made our different material altogether. Chinese are a different, no kind of. They know their they know their own training and training pattern and everything. That's why they're a bit wary about letting the troops on the beach.
to end it on the beat what quite quite interesting mm. yeah no i am i'm telling you the basic difficulties now people talk about no i had been listening to this thing quite often that you know uh, if we some questions are very complex they are too com- complex i said uh, let me uh, kind of a thing prepare uh, to uh, tell the viewers that why it is so complex americans called off operation causeway in 1942 Five hundred thousand, what you call troops, and three thousand naval vessels, and thousands of aircraft. They plan to bring in to invade this very island when only hundred thousand Japanese troops were there. And Mr. Mao wanted to invade this island with his best general, who, but nobody wanted to take the responsibility. Mao also didn't take the responsibility. General Su also was a bit scared of taking the responsibility, along with his chief of staff, General General Zheng. they wanted to invade the same island when taiwan was much militarily superior to what you call uh, uh, china those days they had a better air force they had what you call better what you call uh, navy they had better army better equipment and chinese were expecting that with this much a small force will take over the taiwan and will have only casualties of 100000 the americans with 500000 against 100000 troops they have calculated the casualties of 150000 So that's why the Chinese planning is—it's uh, more of a propaganda. Adi, I'm not an army man. I left service long time back, but uh, I can say one thing: the recent Tawang action, like now the media is talking about it. So these are basic questions. We talk of China's capabilities: surveillance, optics, optical surveillance, electronic surveillance, satellite surveillance, their drones. If I'm not wrong, our post at Taiwan was def- defended by 50 people, and the battalion moved in. Chinese didn't know that the post is not manned by 50 people. The whole lot of 500 or people were there. A full battalion is there. Where was the surveillance system here? Or Indians had camouflaged their movement so well that the Chinese didn't know about it? Well, then we are better than them. And if they could not carry out a proper surveillance. they didn't know a movement that means their surveillance equipment is bad either way you're not fit to fight a war then you you're not a good soldier if you're not trained properly if you cannot camouflage your movement you cannot give an element of surprise to your enemy we are going to attack the same commanders will be in taiwan also the general thing then now coming to the landing part of it as as i said these obstacles will be there and taiwanese would have already put their ships out at sea when the actual build up started their operational vessels and in any navy not at any given time let it be us navy royal navy indian navy or chinese navy not more than 60% of the vessels will be operational because ship is a complicated thing a war ship is a very complicated stuff as compared to a merchant the operational ship and submarines will be out at sea what will be there inside the harbor ships which cannot sail when the war is imminent you know there's going to be war they're going to remove all the, all the ordnance from those ships scuttle those ships inside the harbor in the main channel blocking each and every passage for any ship to come inside the harbor also that's why they will lead artificial harbors piers berths docking facilities cranes to offload in that dam where that you try to in a 2 meter of 3 to 2 to 3 or 4 meters of what you call wave height out in the open sea you try and moving the crane heavy heavy lift crane is not possible mm. so you you want to say something Yeah, it's a whole logistic operation. I mean, at the end of it, it's a huge yeah, logistic exactly. operation. Exactly, just be a precise, coordinated logistics is the main thing. But more than logistics, the weather. How do you bring in the logistics first of all? That's why they keep saying the Taiwan Strait causing an impossible, impossible. You know, the amphibious operations are uh, very complex. I said, let me put in perspective why they're complex, and especially in Taiwan Strait.
World War II, Normandy beaching was successful. Everybody talks of Normandy, Normandy beaching, but nobody talks about the beaching which actually failed. Dieppe, France, another beaching in uh, uh, almost 70 percent of the Canadian force was wiped off in Dieppe, and the rest all, all were had to surrender. Number of ships destroyed here. They couldn't land it properly. Sicily, failed landing. World War One, Wake Island, failed landing by Japanese in the first attempt. After their two destroyers were sunk, they went back and they came back again. People may talk of Falkland. Britishers never landed the landing crafts. Mm. They went by the inflatable boats in limited numbers. Argentinians, when they took over Falkland Island, they came by destroyer and sent a small team because the place was defended only by uh, 68 odd uh, Royal Marines and some uh, 10 or 11 hydrographers and 20, 25 odd guys, the volunteers, what you call the defense force. And there was a very brief, fierce fighting and then governor surrendered. Taiwan is the worst place known today as for the weather phenomena is concerned. Optimal mountains, they call it. Taiwan would have moved everything inside the <clears throat> inside those tunnels. They'll only bring it out when China is actually when they actually have to actually fire on them. So if you talk of preemptive strike when the build buildup is taking place. They would have moved, they already moved in. They stayed, they stayed instead of readiness. Most of their what they call mobile launchers are inside. You can you can a preemptive strike by missile or by aircraft, you can destroy the fixed launchers. How about the mobile launchers? They'll put side put it inside the tunnel, bring it out, fire one, fire two, and go back, go, go inside again. And Taiwanese are known to be master of camouflage. And Chinese, uh, they are they are calling mercenary pilots to train their own pilots here. Uh, I don't know what kind of air force they have. And uh, Chinese, what you call uh, crew at sea, the merchantman I've seen. Uh, one guy come, uh, 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 you come to the moment you come through near Panama Canal, that this guy is uh, coming to the mouth of Panama Canal. This guy is a Chinese captain over there, a Chinese vessel. There is a radio chatter all over the place. All. Every every tell the traffic control, let this guy go in first, we'll come later. Because nobody wants to take a chance with this, this guy ahead of you or behind you. So that is a confidence level of not mine, the entire world for that matter, I've seen. For the Chinese seamen. And at sea operations are pure seamanship, nothing else. I lost track of where I was. Can you go to the, those slides again? I, I went on speaking like in one. Free flow. Now, ne next slide, please. Now, this slide is basically again telling you, you know, how the movement will take place, which I've already spoken about here. The indicator I talk of, strategic indicators, when you have the missile, uh, missile, what you call batteries being moved from point A to point B, wherever they might be at, in different theaters. By the way, I've taken this data from uh, one of the very renowned researchers uh, by the name Ian Easton from his book. Now, this data uh, is four to five years old. Basically, what I'm trying to tell the viewers is that, you know, when you have these, this kind of movement taking place, you cannot hide it. There will be human intelligence. There will be satellites monitoring you. Till your first indication, they're going to carry out a, carry out a, uh, they're preparing for the invasion. Now, here's the thing. The strategic indicator is there. The military commander advises the political leadership in uh, Taiwan. It's a difficult situation for that guy to take a call. China will say, I'm, I'm conducting an exercise. When do you do? When do you actually attack these guys? When they, once they cross the median line? If Taiwan attacks first, China will say, I was about to conduct a uh, amphibious exercise and Taiwan has attacked me 
and the entire narrative world over will change. Now you make it too late, then Taiwan is at disadvantage. Can we move to the next one? Well, before we talk about the invasion watch list, what we call the indicators, you know, we already spoken about logistics stockpiling, there will be blood drives, def defense industrial surge, port expansion surge, road, road and rail expansion, your airport hardening, shipyard production surge. We, I already spoke about the construction required, body fleet my vessel requires, fishing fleets, commercial ships will have to refit it. Now, before these things actually happen, Chinese are badmash, like Americans only, basically. Both are badmash as a matter of fact. China may attempt assassinating top leadership of Taiwan. They may do it through local agents or by carrying out a preemptive missile strike on their location, which will be passed on to Chinese by local agents over there, but there will be local agents on the other side also. Knock off the entire military leadership. In case they do it, will the world take that as an act of terrorism? If Chinese fire, if Taiwan fires the first shot, then the narrative will be different. So Taiwan will have to wait for China to cross the median line with the amphibious task force. And trust me, crossing the median line, as I said, with the weather is not easy. They need speed, time, China. It will not be available to them because they'll be towing artificial harbors, artificial piers, pontoons carrying amphibian tanks and trucks and other equipment. When you're towing in that weather and the three meters of waves you're rolling, towing will part. And vessels will be adrift. Your speed comes down drastic, drastically when you're towing. The artificial docks, spears are made in such a way, I've seen that I used to go alongside that one of those in Port of Pemba, when we are doing the geotechnical uh, drilling over there, those artificial berths and docks are, when you use them, you have to come down alongside very politely and gently, like a French case. You cannot have a little bit of hard also. And that was inside absolutely sheltered water. I'm talking here, the open waters on the beach, you're going to have it. Provided they make it across, half of them will sink, will capsize in that weather, yeah, because the GM is uh, too high. Now, can we move to the next slide, please? There will be recon intelligence ships, aircraft activities, emergency satellite launches. China will launch a uh, few more satellites, as I said, for imagery. Human intelligence operations, there will be a lot of radio chatter for that matter and communication chatter. That's the first sign of something is going to happen. Diplomatic uh, messaging operations worldwide with special focus on the United States and Japan. Nuclear blackmail. Media and personal contacts. As I said earlier, academic inter intellect. Academia and journalists will start saying, what if China uses nuclear war? We'll be call, calling. There'll be a World War Three, as people have been talking about Russia and China, uh, Ukraine war also. That fear mongering will start. That's what China wants exactly. Propaganda campaign. campaign. Now, you see the propaganda is a, can be a two-way all. I'm, I'll give an example. China, Chinese propaganda we, we know about. Here you have Taiwanese and Chinese army face to face fighting with each other. And Taiwanese guys telling them, come and join us, we'll give you freedom. You're staying in a communist country. You don't have any freedom. Why you want to die here? Don't you want to go back and take care of your wife and children? The, uh, uh, this CCP will not take care of your wife and children. And from the heart of heart that dies, no, if I'm dead, nobody will take care of my wife and children. 
and my mother, aging parents of my brother or whosoever is at home. So there can be a counter propaganda also, like it happened with the INA and the British Army. Can you move to the next slide, slide please? Uh, all these points I have spoken about loading, gathering ships at the areas in advance and wait offshore in dispersed groups, dock or anchor, load at night, gather for the crossing is going to be a one humongous operation. Adi, it's not going to be that simple. Mm. The entire world will come to know China is going to attack. Because when you do exercise, you don't involve 700,000 odd groups here and three to 5,000 number of vessels. You don't have secret meetings, you know, the uh, top leadership moving up and down in Beijing and having meetings in which everybody is watching. It. As I said, disembark and form of all groups, location 10 to 35 miles offshore here. In that weather, in that kind of a sea, in April also I am saying you will have 2 to 3 meters of wave here. 10 to 35 miles offshore. Coming down the scrambling net when two vessels are moving in opposite direction and both the vessels have got a 6 degrees of movement to go, or go about, you are going to have number of casualties there only. And the guys standing on top will refuse to go down on the scramble net. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, this bombard coastline, shell coastline, and surf zone with destroyers, frigates, sweep mines, clear obstacles. I've already said that if they're going to do all these things, when they're going to land the troops here? Are you going to send the engineers first, the Marine Corps first, or your crack team first? You already landed troops behind the enemy lines and, you know, at the airport, you've got your, what you call, uh, <coughs> airships, helicopters, aircrafts, dropping paratroopers. And here, if the landing goes wrong, everything is not synchronized in time, the entire operation is a mess up. Can we move on to the next one? This is for the viewers to read. I have spoken all of it actually before this slide came up. Rather. We, we can go through the slides and uh, viewers can have a look at it. And uh, I want to go to uh, stop at one slide. Now, these are the China bases. Coming back to things, when the movement takes place, they will draw forces from everywhere. Your squad, Air Force squadrons and the Army rocket forces will be uh, moving from all over the places and coming down to somewhere near Fujian, the most probable staging area. I am saying most probable because Army has its own secrets and their own plans. But this is uh, logically what makes more sense is somewhere around that area they will have it. The next slide, please. Now, this Pengu Island. Will Chinese occupy that first or go to main, mainland, main, main Taiwan? If they don't take Pengu Island, they'll be, they got a heavy buildup of their missiles and rocket forces there on the Pengu Island. And that will be on the right flank of the landing zone. And if they attack Pengu Island first, there will not be any beaching over there. They will take a heavy beating and Taiwan will be forewarned. There will be counter strikes from their side. Marta Kiana Karta, there will be a Colonel do, there may be a Colonel do little kind of an airstrike at the staging area only before the war starts. Or when the half the flotilla has sailed out, the half is getting ready to follow them, there will be, there may be a what you call a punch one-way ticket kind of a stuff and they may go across here and strike them. That's Quite all. Possible. Pardon? Quite possible, sir. 
Yeah, they will do it. Marta, kya na karta hai? Yeah, the four or five guys flying the, uh, you know, extra low altitude over the sea to avoid the radar detection and climb up at the last moment to launch a Harpoon missile and couple of bombs on the what you call in the staging area here. With all those defenses on the beach and the weather part of it, I'm talking of the defense of the beach, you know, mines and the counter strike by the counter counter assault by the Taiwanese troops will come later. But first they got to weather it out in the straight where weather is gonna kill them if you really ask them. That's why I showed that slide first. And uh, Adi is not, uh, that's a superstition. Again, as I, said, as I said, not a rational way of thinking. The main reason is, I'll go slightly technical over here. The naval guy and the merchant men will understand. Just for the guys who don't uh, uh, not know much about the sea, there's something known as tide rips. And tides, tide rips means like, no, the there'll be uh, three or four currents from various directions. And uh, your vessel, you have no control over the vessel. You have no control over the vessel. You may have an engine power or the wheel. Vessel will go off 30 degrees to one side and then 40 degrees to the other side. The head will alter course. Head will change direction. Till such time you come out of tide rips or tide rips go past you. You have no control. And when you're doing something and you get stuck in that tide rip, you'll be going everywhere the tugging vessel, the vessel which is in, uh, towing actually, will be in this direction and you'll have the object being towed in this direction. There will be hard maneuvering by everybody around because everybody is moving in a very close formation. You won't be moving two miles apart. You'll be coming in a very close formation. There will be collisions. When I'm talking about the fire on the surface on the beach, now imagine a landing craft guy trying to maneuver it out left, right to avoid the fire. There you may have a fire hoses hanging down to spray and you know with a fire uh, with a, a fire nozzle jet trying to push the flame away, but still you have to maneuver your vessel. Two vessels maneuvering in our close proximity are bound to collide. Taiwanese have prepared the defenses very well. As such, the amphibious operations I said, coordination, speed, time is of prime importance. And on top of that, if you have these kind of obstructions I'm talking of, oil sleek fire. I was talking to one of the Taiwanese taxi drivers. No, I said, what if China, China invades? You know what he said? Let them come. You see all these factories here, chemicals, depending on the wind direction, we blow up our chemical factories. No, well, this is the way those, they made up their mindset that they have to fight Taiwan. Will China be prepared for the chemical warfare? Taiwan will say, I didn't use chemical weapon. There was a factory and, you know, uh, one shell hit the factory. It was a misfire by either by China or by me. The factory blew up and the chemical leak, uh, the gas leaked from there, not my fault. Who you blame at that time? Will they come donning the chemical suits or biological suits? Well, they can wear, but it's too cumbersome and you don't have a movement, a freedom of movement thereafter. So that is the way those guys are thinking. And they say, and Taiwan is, they say very clearly, why don't we, why we don't need to fight them militarily? The moment is, we come to know they're starting the war, most of the employees from China are working, are on the payrolls of Taiwanese companies here. We, they, they said, we'll just chop off their uh, payrolls. They won't get their pay. It's a banking transaction. Electronic trans uh, transaction, you have to... Wire the money because we won't wire the money. Millions of employees from the middle class families, they're going to be what you call uh, uh, without salary. And that is the problem. The, what China has a, another problem. He may deploy 700,000 troops here. He will have to control the civil unrest within his own country. When guys are not getting salary, there will be protests. There are protests now in, in any case taking place in China. Then we have a Tibet and might Tibet might create problem, Uyghurs might get create problem for them. They will need not police, internal security, they'll need the military men to control them. 
कितने आदमी लगा लेंगे यार एंड यू नॉट गोन कैप्चर तैवान और ऑक्यूपाइड डिस्पाइट हैवी कॉस्ट विल दे एक्चुअली गो गो एंड इनवेट तैवान Unless and until Z has gone too desperate and absolutely mad, and some hawkish general, totally radicalized and indoctrinated to the CCP, communist what you call books, only he will do it. Otherwise, no sane person will take take up such an operation. That's all from my side. Uh, That was interesting, sir, because the propaganda says the otherwise, and uh, everybody is bracing for the imminent Ch- Chinese attack on Taiwan. i think uh, to my mind the chinese themselves say that they're not ready for it at the moment and they will get ready in 2027 uh, by that time and, ready. yeah let's hope and pray they don't do anything stupid because <laughs> it will create a whole whole different <coughs> market in our uh, region and neighborhood guys uh, let's get into your questions here i'll just take uh, you know a, a few questions from a lot of the comments that have come here uh like and subscribe most critically if you can please do help out the dev talks efforts with a qr code yeah, right here direct contributions or you can send us a super sticker or a super chat in your uh chat box down below let's see right let's get into your questions china could open the conflict with a massive cyber attack tripling the taiwanese advance warning and defense networks I already said that they will do it. The cyber part of it, they carry out those. They'll carry out those attacks. But when it comes to man-to-man contact at the time of landing, what they're going to do? Handle radio contacts when you fight in a close proximity in groups. Handle radio radios are more than enough. Movement that those are the precursor. I said the cyber attack will be the precursor. what they are after china will have to come and invade taiwan it will be like ukraine only finally <laughs> it's yeah i mean strategic ambiguity is an excellent strategy asian thinking it's like showing his cat in the box and not at the same time uh how did the us with its reductionist mindset come up with it john uh, strategic ambiguity is an excellent strategy i don't think so the being ambiguous for anything is a excellent strategy you have to make it clear this side or that side that is what has emboldened china till now that's my what you call opinion adi Mm, absolutely if, sir if usa had made it clear the way they made it clear in 1949 1958 and they changed the stance in 70s china wouldn't have wouldn't be talking about invading taiwan they should have been kept at their place all the time in the box not at the same time again i said keep yourself very clear what your priorities are indeed Uh, I I will tell John one thing, you know. Lot of people are talking about at the moment. Uh, de-dollarization and will will it happen or not happen? Uh, a group of countries having their own what you call trade for that matter and their own currency, like the India is going for the currency of eighteen nations. well you can have it here within 18 nations only and i can only sell what i have other guy will will sell me what he has how i relate a common currency between him and me it is something like a mother mother in law of group of nations like a mother in law and four or five daughter in law in the house one guy will dominate other four will not like other four may, may fight with each other they may not like each other 
But when it comes to mother-in-law, all four will get together and fight against the mother-in-law. BRICS, you want to have a common currency with China? Knowing what China is for that matter? What is the datum for the currency for that matter? Don't talk about euros. That was a different thing altogether. Here we are talking of imports and exports within, for example, BRICS. Uska datum kya banaoge yaar? Currency ka pehle yeh batao mujhko. Will you allow China to dominate all the countries? Yeah, but the BRICS, BRICS proposal, I believe, is a little different. It's an equal equal share gold base. So gold based. Coming to the gold part of it. Let's look at it this way. You know why China is interested in Arunachal Pradesh? Apart from the agriculture land and whatever they call South of Tibet. There is a region which is in south of South Tibet that is very rich in gold. They are already doing mining over there. And the disputed area between Arunachal and Tibet is also rich in gold. The gold mines over there. Will Russia and China be friends forever? Russia has got gold in the bordering area of China. And today Russia has the third largest, if I'm not wrong, gold mine reserves. India, we don't have that much of gold as compared to China. So our currency will be down. Why should we agree to that, that particular gold-based datum for that matter? China's economy is going down. Their GDP is down. I would say that let the uh, GDP the, uh, what you call, base for the uh, currency datum. But just my thought, you know, the way I'm thinking. Let's go, sir. Uh... Sorry, I'm just, yeah. The issue is with so many comments, you get lost in the series. Uh, with the target of an eruption of war between China and Taiwan, it will give importance to the AUKUS officially launched nuclear power submarines armed with Trident strategic missiles. Uh, every country looks after themselves. Australia needs nuclear submarines. Taiwan needs their own weapons. Now I believe there are some 60 odd billion dollars uh, Pending weapon sale is being cleared. Not cleared, rather, which was kind of a thing. It was a pending, and that has been they started the delivery to Taiwan. AUKUS part of it. Australia is the one which is got a nuclear submarine. I, there was a deal between US and Australia. They're getting a nuclear submarine. Every country looks after themselves. And we had been discussing on this channel that AUKUS is more for the Atlantic side, not for the for this region. And yesterday, General Narayan's program, I watched this morning. India's interest is elsewhere in Indo-Pacific. Their interest is the West is interested somewhere else in the Indo-Pacific. And again, nuke weapons are basically, nobody's going to use it. What do you say? Like, I, I doubt anybody will use a nuke weapon that that is that. I Pardon? don't think I don't think anybody will use it. It'll be stupid. Yeah, nuke attack submarines are, can be there, but using nuke weapons is I, I doubt very much. Tactical probably here and there once. Yeah. I don't. That to that to uh, you know, we'll say ten percent probably tactical nuke may, may be used, but not otherwise. Yeah. Just before the Ukraine invasion, Putin went to Beijing, and now. Uh, now she is going to Moscow. That too, just before the perfect window of invasion. USA banks are failing. Perfect time to move in. I said the window is few weeks in April. 
that to not show or the weather is going to turn within 12 hours and Beijing is in no position to fight a war economically or food insecurity they have major problem with the civil unrest is going on they are not going to invade taiwan in near future unless and until he wants to commit suicide well go ahead we all already spoken about it forget c6 sir i took a 7 day cruise for the next 5 days and kept tilting left and right by 5 degrees <laughs> It was a funny one, so I just thought I'd put it up. Uh, so, as we are assessing the difficulty for China to invade, even Chinese would have known by now. Do you think they would, might have some out of the box strategy to outflank everyone? Yeah, you can have any, any out of box strategy, but how do you counter the mother nature, the weather part of it? And finally, when you come on the beach, you will not be able to take hundred percent what you have. offloaded beyond the beach because you will have damages mine what you call damages uh, uh, obstacle damages is not going to be that easy technology may have advanced by now and new strategies may have come up but the basics will never change the kind of casualties after each war after each operation there are lessons learned after normandy beaching also lessons learned and those lessons learned are never shared with anybody china hasn't had any experience of beaching till date except for the drill time exercise time that is very good when everything is cleared up come and land over here you know the guys divers will go down and show that the bottom is clean there is no rock protruding out they're going to a beach which is unknown to you here and the mother nature i'll repeat again is unfor un unforgiving and the first slide which said that we said that they are not the currents or what you call the waves they are the departed souls who will pull you down and take you to after life that's true sir um will us be a party to china taiwan war directly or they will still play proxy if this war escalates and make china to attack the us territories it will lead to nato court to jump in too far fetched maman maman before sir comes in i just say that's too far fetched maman it's a very good question like you know will us be party to china taiwan directly or they will play proxy there was somebody who asked the first question like you know ambiguous strategy part of it No, they want to China to attack US territories is no that's not the USA has kept it cards close to their chest that what they're going to do next if China has to attack US territories China will have to pay hell thereafter preemptive strike we're talking of look at the number of bases US has yaar yeah. how many places they're going to fight Uh, neutralize it i think uh, i have that slide uh, the last yeah, slide you can show i'll just put it up yeah look at the number of us bases yeah wo kitna maar loge yaar kacha se baat aayega ammunition ammunition not in finite and as far as the taiwan is concerned i have a strong feeling that they will make taiwan to fight and give china bloody nose because taiwan is not ukraine they are two different war scenarios all together as such taiwan has a very robust air defense with patriot missiles and cbo 3 missiles if they supply them more missiles for air defense and cruise missiles as such they have harpoon on mobile launchers which are anti ship missiles and harpoon is the one which sank that which is that russian uh, flagship yeah which you can see sank moscow yeah allegedly hit the moscow yeah that was harpoon missile only it may be subsonic but the missile is beautiful you cannot intercept it that easily 
China preemptive strike may destroy all the what you call fixed launchers. How about the mobile launchers? Yeah, he fires one and goes back inside the tunnel again, and comes out to fire second and goes back again. The problem, another is that Taiwan, you can actually get a beachhead and go inside. The Taiwanese terrain is terrible. They brought but hills also, and mountains and. The Taiwani armies will move to the mountains. That's why I said the land battle part of it. I would prefer that you know, uh, General Rajiv sir, General Sh General Shankar sir, uh, they talk about it. Uh, Taiwanese will go back to the mountains and start the guerrilla warfare from there. Yeah, absolutely. And what China is what China is expecting here? You tell me one thing. They're going to destroy the entire Taiwan and suffer the similar kind of damage on the mainland. And what will China's economy at that time? Seventy percent of their business on electronics is based on the based uh, is operated from Taiwan. Mm. So, तभी तो उनका वो Li Qiang बोल रहा है अभी पिछले एक हफ्ते में कितनी बार दो बार बोल दिया उसने there our blood brothers why we should have a bloodshed <laughs> that's wo jana ki baat ko koi believe nahi kar sakta ki aaj ye bola kal kya karega but at least that words have come out and words don't come out till such time we have some thought out over here yeah ek last le lete hain sir ha uh will Ch taiwan join china just like taliban or uh, at or after the declaration of war 50% of taiwan votes for pro china party how can we be so sure push come to solve meri jaan mujhe pyari yeah taiwan is like i tell you the only way they can china can take over taiwan is that if there is some red leaning political leader and he has a following and taiwan that generation is going of the newer generation they don't consider themselves to be chinese first of all as i said not now 1990s their president ma was what you call eight said the more of, because president ma was bit pro china and there were uh, what you call the sunflower movement at that time in their parliament mm. when he wanted to sign some fresh deals with uh, you know china chinese students didn't want it the deals had to be frozen at that time one of his personal aides he said that the more students they know about china mainland the more they hate china once you get a, free, a taste of freedom here yeah, you don't want to go back to that kind of a regime and now even if china says one china or one one country two systems nobody is going to believe them after seeing what has happened in hong kong and that's why taiwan is the most scared now agar meri jaan pe aa gayi hai to they won't be preparing the defenses that way and usa trust me will try its best to not let china go towards uh, taiwan go towards china as i said if that goes japan is gone out of their hands japan will have a major problem They will be subservient to China. Philippines will be subservient to China. You have lost whole lot of island chains over there. Yeah. And USA won't let it happen under any circumstances. That is it. It's a it's a it's a tough fight. It's not a walkover sort of a situation. You know, everybody thinks that because the Chinese have that much power. It's going to be a walkover situation. It's not. It's going to be a very. उनका power कहाँ है यार मैं अभी तो बता रहा हूँ कि उनका capability हम बोलते रहते हैं बोलते रहते हैं. You know, it's a more of a fear psychosis. यार तो buy to जो system है चाइना का, the accuracy they talk of. This morning, just to confirm that I had doubts. About the Chinese capabilities, I said I called one of my shipping captains, who was junior to me. I asked him, "Yeah, ये Baidu जो है तेरा कैसा अभी आ गया कि हमारे DP field में क्या नहीं? Because there we need accuracy of dynamic accuracy of one to three centimeters here." He is laughing and saying, "कि सर क्या हो गया आपको आप कोई franchise खरीद रहे हो उसके लिए क्या? कोई नहीं लेगा लेगा system. कहता Baidu के क्या accuracy है कहते हैं? 
China can claim to shoot a missile, to put a missile through bloody uh, rats rectum in with, with Baidu system, but th see, I tell you the two ways of accuracy. One is the absolute accuracy, one is the relevant ac uh, relative accuracy. Now, absolute accuracy, we talk on the particular grid. Relative uh, accuracy is respect to a relative to a particular object. Abhi, I Ambala station ke upar Jalandar ka naam laga do. और जलंधर स्टेशन पे अंबाला का नाम लगा दूं वो मिसाइल जो मैंने जलंधर फीड किया वहीं वहीं जाके गिरेगी 95% द सर्कल ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एरर 95% विल फॉल ऑन जलंधर दैट इज द एक्यूरेसी बट दैट इज नॉट जलंधर दैट इज अंबाला या दैट इज अ ग्रेट कोऑर्डिनेट आई एम टॉकिंग ऑन द एब्सोल्यूट एक्यूरेसी अगर उनका इतना अच्छा सिस्टम है बाय डू आज से नहीं पता नहीं कब से शुरू किया हुआ है यार कमर्शियल वर्ल्ड में वो यूज हो जाता अभी तक मैंने तो अभी तक नहीं देखा उनका सिस्टम और जिससे भी बात की है वो बोलता है इट्स अ ब्लडी नथिंग खाली प्रोपागेंडा बाय चाइना और एनी स्टूडेंट ऑफ जियोडेसी और एनी लैंड सर्वे और हाइड्रोग्राफर विल टेल यू दिस पर्टिकुलर चाइना वॉट इज टॉकिंग इज नॉट पॉसिबल इज टॉकिंग इंटीग्रेटिंग फाइव जी सिस्टम फाइव जी सिस्टम किस फ्रीक्वेंसी बैंड में काम करेगा फिफ्टी एटी गीगा हर्ट्स में कितना रेंज होगा 50 80 गीगाहर्ट्ज का या 9 टू 10 किलो 9 टू 10 10 माइल्स और 10 किलोमीटर्स उसका जो चैनल है कैरी करने के लिए तुम्हारा 50 और 80 गीगाहर्ट्ज की फ्रीक्वेंसी को 250 तुम 250 का यूज करोगे 250 का गीगा मेगाहर्ट्ज का चैनल या या 250 का यूज करोगे मेगाहर्ट्ज का चैनल द डिफरेंस इज जस्ट 2 किलोमीटर्स इंप्रूवमेंट जो नैरोइंग द चैनल एंड इंक्रीजिंग द रेंज तो वो उसका कांसेप्ट जो है ना वो को चाइना ही जानता है अगर इतने तो प्रूव करके दिखा दो यार तुम डेजर्ट में एक वो सैटेलाइट इमेज दिखा दिया अमेरिका को कि उसने एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर बनाया हुआ है एंड दे कॉलिंग दैट मिसाइल एंड एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर किलर अरे एट सी फायर करके एक शिप को डुबो के दिखा दो यार दैट्स मोर देन एनफ प्रैक्टिस टारगेट शिप के ऊपर वो सैटेलाइट से इमेज लेके वो वर्ल्ड को पब्लिश कर दिया जानबूझ के डेलीबरेटली If a country has a good system, you mean to say tell the entire world that I got so much of accuracy of my system? You like to give a surprise here? Yeah, वो चाइना का तो यार तुम छोड़ो उसको वो बोलता क्या है वो क्या उसके दिमाग किसी को नहीं पता? That is true, sir. Thanks so much for the research and the details about uh, this entire segment. Of course, you know we uh, it's a it's something that is going to play out in the next year or two whether it happens or not and the rhetoric is going to be on there is just no question about that narrative chalta rahega baki sab kuch dekhte hain whether actuality mein kuch hota hai ki nahi yeah. so we'll keep tracking on it and we'll keep seeing if we can come back with an update about this situation and a lot many more till then sir as said once again thank you so much Excellent. for the lovely lovely uh, 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 details and uh, research that you've done till next time sir and everybody else before i sign off please hit the like button subscribe and most importantly spread the word jai hind sir good night to everybody